Jacques Lacan, Aggressiveness and Psychoanalysis. Theoretical paper presented in Brussels in mid-May 1948 at the 11th Congress of French-speaking psychoanalysts. The preceding paper presented to you the use I make of the notion of aggressiveness in clinical work and therapy. That notion must now be put to the test before you to determine whether or not we can wrest a concept from it that may lay claim to scientific usefulness. In other words, a concept that can, be, that can objectify facts that are of a comparable order in reality or, more categorically, that can establish a dimension of analytic experience in which these objectified facts may be regarded as variables. All of us here at this gathering share an experience based on a technique and a system of concepts to which we are faithful, as much because the system was developed by the man who opened up all of that experience's pathways to us, as because it bears the living mark of its stages of development. In other words, contrary to the dogmatism with which we are taxed, we know that the system remains open as regards both its completion and a number of its articulations. These hiatuses, hiatuses seem to come together in the enigmatic signification Freud expressed with the term death instinct, attesting, rather like the figure of the Sphinx, to the aporia this great mind encountered in the most profound attempt to date to formulate one of man's experiences in the biological register. This aporia lies at the heart of the notion of aggressiveness, whose role in the psychical economy we appreciate better every day. That is why the question of the metapsychological nature of the deadly tendencies is constantly being raised by our theoretically inclined colleagues, not without contradiction, and often, it must be admitted, in a rather formalistic way. I would simply like to proffer a few remarks or, or theses inspired by my years of reflection upon this veritable aporia in psychoanalytic doctrine, and by the sense I have, after reading numerous works, of our responsibility for the current evolution of laboratory psychology and psychotherapy. I am referring, on the one hand, to so-called behaviorist research that seems to me to owe its best results, and significant as they sometimes appear compared to the sizable theoretical apparatus with which they are framed, to the often implicit use it makes of categories psychoanalysis has con contributed to psychology, and, on the other hand, to the kind of treatment given to both adults and children that might be placed under the heading of psychodrama, which looks to ab reaction for its therapeutic power, trying to exhaust it at the level of role-playing, and to which classical psychoanalysis has, once again, contributed the actual guiding notions.